out of 73 dishes one has poison we will be careful to protect our life and if I say out of 73 72 has poison when we say only one got poison still no one will try to eat even one dish with the fear that that food which I take it may contain poison but if there are 72 poisonous out of 73 no one which will go to touch anything he will have such fear now our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam state out of 73 72 to be uh, in the hellfire Allahu Akbar only one is going to Jannah how much precaution we should take to protect our Iman to find which is on the right path so the simple criteria to find which is Ahlul Sunnati Wal Jama'ah the group which will get the salvation the criteria is the beliefs possessed by Sahaba Kiram Ridwanullahi Alihi Majma'in Allah Akbar so let us go and see Sahaba of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the unity of Ummah people are divided today because they are not on the beliefs of Sahaba if all the people come to the beliefs of Sahaba there is no disunity but again if we try to say there can't be a disunity only unity should be there this is impossible because Allah's Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stated there will be 73 groups so this has to happen this has to happen so what does unity mean now Allah stated that hold on the rope of Allah firmly do not be divided so this division Allah says not to get divided Allah's Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam states there will be division and can our Nabi go against the Quran impossible if someone says that our Nabi went against the Quran he is out of the fold of Islam Quran states doesn't say anything at his own whatever he says is by the will of Allah we will make you read so that you will never forget we will make you read you will never forget oh my habib even if you forget that will be also by the will of Allah so our Nabi doesn't forget he has been made forget to establish a sunnah as Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stated I don't forget I am made to forget in order to establish a sunnah and Quran confirms this that oh my Habib we will make you read in such a manner that you will not forget illa masha Allah even if you forget that will be by the will of Allah wa ta'ala. so our Nabi cannot go against the Quran then what does this verse mean unity within the Muslims who got the true Aqeedah unity within those people who has the same beliefs no unity with those who got different beliefs when I say different beliefs it is not furu it is usul on the Aqeedah Allahu Akbar let us go one by one now you can see the image here this is Tafsir ibn Kathir and the author of this Tafsir is Hafiz ibn Kathir who is the student of Ibn Taymiyyah who has been, who has been regarded as Shaykh al-Islam by some people they take his name out of respect saying Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah this way they mention so Hafiz ibn Kathir a student of Ibn Taymiyyah and there is another version which is the English version of Tafsir ibn Kathir and you can see in between a bracket which says a bridged version that is a short version now this short version of Tafsir has come being translated from Arabic version which is also a bridged a mukhtasar version of Tafsir ibn Kasir has been made and the, tafsir, the translation of English 
was done of that mukhtasar tafsir in that you can see Hafiz ibn Kasir has recorded some incidents of Sahaba Karam Ridwanullahi Alihi Majma'in which proves the ilmul ghaib of Sahaba Karam Ridwanullahi Alihi Majma'in the knowledge of the unseen of Sahaba now if I ask you a question if you ask a scholar who is not from Ahlul Sunnati Wal Jama'ah though, though he claimed that I am a Sunni if you ask him what do you say about the ilmul ghaib of Allah's Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam even if you google it you know the first answer what you get Allah has not given the knowledge of unseen to his Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they quote a verse of the Quran as well some ahadith of Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as well the impression given is if you believe that Allah's Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam possessed the knowledge of the unseen you have gone against the Quran because Allah Ta'ala stated وَعِنْدَهُ مَفَاتِحُ الْغَيْبِ لَا يَعْلَمُهَا إِلَّا هُ the keys of the unseen are with Allah no one is aware other than Allah they also give you a verse قُلْ لَا أَقُولُ لَكُمْ عِنْدِي خَزَائِنُ اللَّهُ وَلَا أَعْلَمُ الْغَيْبِ Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stated I do not claim that I got the khazana, I got the treasure nor I claim that I got the knowledge of the unseen by producing this verse they try to give the impression that Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was not given the knowledge of the unseen whereas there are other verses of the Holy Quran which confirms the ilmul ghaib of Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and of other prophets of Allah Tabaraka Wa Ta'ala when Allah mentioned وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُطْلِعَكُمْ عَلَى الْغَيْبِ it is not the shan of Allah Tabaraka Wa Ta'ala to give the knowledge of the unseen to the common people وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يَجْتَبِي مِنْ رُسُلِهِ مَنْ يَشَى but Allah selects from his Rasuls Allah gives the knowledge of the unseen to his messengers Alimul Ghaib Allah is Alimul Ghaib Fala yudhiru ala ghaibihi ahada He never reveals his secrets to anyone Illa Man irtada min Rasul but to his chosen Rasul So Allah himself says that I give the knowledge of the unseen to my messengers Then who are we to say that Nabi doesn't have the knowledge of the unseen If we say this we are going against the Quran so now the answer is very simple wherever Allah stated that Allah knows the knowledge of the unseen other than Allah none is aware that is also right and where Allah stated I have given the knowledge of the unseen to my Rasul that is also right but both can't be right one has to be right so if you go to a Sunni scholar he will explain you in light of the tafsir in light of the ahadith that both are correct and the explanation would be Allah's knowledge is self-knowledge dhati none has given anything to Allah his knowledge is self eternal azali abadi qadeem Allah is azali abadi qadeem Allah's sifat attributes are also azali abadi qadeem and the knowledge of the prophets of Allah is a bestowal from Allah Allah has gifted so how simple answer is this but when you see in the Google and even in the books written by the one who is called as Sheikh Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab Najdi, if you write, if you search for the books, you will find that they have clearly written that the knowledge of the unseen was not given to Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Allahu Akbar. Hafiz ibn Kasir, being a student of Ibn Taymiyyah, has recorded one hadith, which is under the verse Ulaika humul mu'minun haqqa Surah Anfal Ayat number 4 Under this verse He has recorded a hadith which can be seen in the screen Allah's Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once asked O Harith Kaifa asbahta ya Harith O Harith How did you make your morning today? How did you find your day today? Sayyiduna Harith radiallahu ta'ala who replied Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Asbahtu mu'minan haqqa Ya Rasulullah I began my day in a state that I am a perfect believer 
question raised by nabi karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam to a sahabi and a sahabi response ya rasulullah i began my day in a state that i am a perfect believer mu'minan haqqa then allah rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam stated unzur ma taqul see what are you saying fama haqiqatu imanik what is the reality of your iman o harith sayyidina harith radhiyallahu anhu responded ya rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam I made myself engaged in the remembrance of Allah tabaaraka wa ta'ala day and night and Allah tabaaraka wa ta'ala blessed me with such a vision ya Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa ka'anni anzuru ila arshi rabbi bariza it is like i can see the manifestation i can see under the arsh of Allah tabaaraka wa ta'ala arsh is in my sight ya Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam Arsh, the biggest creation of Allah, Tabaraka wa Taala, Ya Rasul Allah. I can see what is under the arsh. Did our Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam say, "Oh Haris, how could you say that? Arsh is hidden. How can you claim that you are looking at the arsh? And that is also clearly. Not only that, Sayyidina Haris radhiyallahu taala who stated, Ya Rasul Allah, wa ka ni angzuru ila ahli jannah." I see the people of Jannah greeting each other. People of Jannah greeting each other. That also I see, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Not only that, the people of Jahannam, the people of the hellfire, I can hear their noises also, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Now my question is, have people gone to Jannah? When will they enter Jannah? After the day of judgment. Qiyama has to occur. After Qiyama, Mahshar will be occurred. Accounts will be will be established. Allah's Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam will perform a sajda in praise of Allah tabaraka wa taala. A long sajda where he stated that I will praise Allah tabaraka wa taala with such words that none has praised Allah in those words before me. Allahu akbar. And those words will be inclined to me at that time. When our Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam will perform sajda, Allah will respond, Ya Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, irfa' ra'sak, raise your head, O my Habib sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Qul tusma, say, O my Habib, whatever you say, that will be answered. Sal tu'ata, you ask, my Habib, whatever you ask, that will be granted. Washfa'atu shafa, you seek shafa'at, O my Habib, your shafa'at, your intercession will be accepted. So people will go to Jannah after the shafaat of Nabi Karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and those who are deserving for the hellfire, they will enter hell when after Qiyama, after the account has been established. But this Sahabi Hazrat Haris radhiyallahu anhu claims, Ya Rasool Allah, I can see now that people are greeting each other in Jannah. Ya Rasul Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam I can see the people of the hellfire I can hear their noises Ya Rasul Allah and I can see what is under the arsh Ya Rasul Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam Did our Nabi say O oh, Haris you have committed something shirk This is wrong how could you see the arsh People have not entered Jannah how could you say that you are looking at Jannah People have not entered hell so yet After Qiyama, there will be those who are deserving will enter hell. How could you say that you see? Allah, no. Ah, Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam stated, Ya Harith, Arafta, Falzam, Ya Harith. Whatever you saw, whatever you are, this is right. You have recognized and be firm in this belief, O Harith. Nabi Karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam confirmed this saying that, Oh my Ghulam, Oh my Sahabi. What you see now, when you you claim that you are a perfect believer, this is right that the perfect believer, being a perfect believer, you can see what is the bene beneath the arsh. You can see the people of Jannah. You can listen to their salams, and you are even listening to the noises of the people of the hell. You are a perfect believer, and be firm in this. Allahu Akbar. How beautifully explained. Now, when a knowledge of a Sahabi is proven in such a manner. that allah's rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam who is the alimul quran who can be more knowledgeable than nabi karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the matter of quran because allah stated wa nazzalna alaykal kitab 
tibiyan likulli shay o my habib sallallahu alaihi wasallam the book which we revealed upon you contains everything in detail tibiyan likulli shay everything in detail and this quran which contains every wit and dry every small and a greater thing nothing is hidden everything is written to the extent that sayyiduna abdullah ibn abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhu states that allah has given me the knowledge of the quran by the dua of nabi kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam so much that if the rope of my camel is lost i find the rope of my camel from quran allah such a knowledge everything is in quran are we able to find anything if it's lost from the quran knowledge of the sahaba unimaginable so nabi kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam being alim al quran and allah says ar rahman allam al quran oh my habib rahman has taught you the quran we have taught you the quran the quran which contains everything in detail is taught by allah to his habib sallallahu alaihi wasallam can there be any shortage of the knowledge of nabi kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam if anyone claims yes there is a shortage then he is doubting on the teachings of allah tbaraka wa taala so those those narrations which we find in the hadith where nabi kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam for example he said i don't know this or i don't know that which are for the purpose of education none can show a single incident after the verse wa allama kama lam takun ta'lam oh my habib sallallahu alaihi wasallam we have taught you all what you did not know we have taught you all what you did not know that mean nothing remains which to say that i don't know everything is taught to nabi kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam after this particular incident none can show any single hadith which talks about that nabi kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not know this or that after this was none can show anyhow why my target here to explain is to the youngsters especially who got confused with this belief that our nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam approves the ilm of a sahabi of his khadim the ilm the thing which is going to happen after qiyama not tomorrow not after 100 years not after 1000 years this was mentioned 1400 years ago already about 1400 years passed how many more years till qiyama we never know and after qiyama accounts will be established one day of qiyama is equal to 50000 years of this dunya how many time to go the things which are going to happen after that can be observed by the ghulam of nabi kareem sallallahu ta'ala alaihi wasallam very clearly mentioned so if this is proven you have to believe that nabi also got the knowledge of the ansi because the knowledge of a sahabi is proven and our nabi approves it so you will have to believe that and the references other references which you find by alja in aljamil muammar bin rashid the scholar of hijri 154 first century second century hijri and az-zuhd li ibn mubarak sayyiduna imam mubarak ibn mubarak radiyallahu an hijri 180 khairul qurun musannaf ibn abi shayba hijri 235 first three centuries all the trees as a pins if we make use of whole ocean as a inks and seven more oceans to come to make use ink make use of inks in order to write your knowledge ya rasulullah we cannot complete your knowledge when we are unable to complete the knowledge of nabi kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam by even making use of whole ocean and all the trees of the earth as pins one sifat of nabi one attribute of nabi cannot be comprehended by us how are we going to praise nabi kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam fully this is what ala hazrat imam ahmad raza beautifully stated allahu akbar ya rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam tere to wasf ab tanahi se hai bar ya rasulullah your attributes your sifat it is even free from the flaw of ending ending of a thing is also a flaw 
किसी चीज का खत्म होना यह भी एक ऐब है एंडिंग ऑफ अ थिंग इज ऑल्सो अ फ्लॉ आला हजरत स्टेटेड या रसूल अल्लाह अल्लाह हैज गिवन यू सच विजडम्स सच क्वालिटी सच एट्रीब्यूज आर बेस्टोड अपॉन यू दैट इट इज फ्री फ्रॉम ऑल फ्लॉज इवन द फ्लॉ ऑफ एंडिंग तेरे तो वस ऐब इतना ही से है बरी विद दिस इज योर स्टेट या रसूल अल्लाह हैरा हूं मेरे शाह मैं क्या क्या कहूं तुझे when this is your state ya rasulullah how am i to praise you i am not even able to praise even of your one quality and finally he stated lekin raza ne khatm sukh nis pe kar diya raza has made a conclusion from this word what is that khaliq ka banda you are the creation of allah khalq ka aqa kahu tujhe and the master of all the creation creation of allah the most beloved of allah and master of all the creation in short ala hazrat has concluded in this manner allahu akbar so our ah, nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam's knowledge is limited in the sight of allah but in our sight it is unlimited so the meaning meaning of ala kulli ghaib of every ghaib whatever allah taught to his habib sallallahu alaihi wasallam now some people say when our nabi has told about something such as jannah jahannam the signs of qiyamah now it doesn't remain as ghaib anymore when the ghaib is taught now it doesn't remain as unseen anymore this is baseless in this scenario allah has taught to his habib sallallahu alaihi wasallam so there is nothing remaining ghaib for allah can they say this is no more ghaib so if this is no more ghaib according to your explanation that when a thing is shown explained it is no more a ghaib and you also agree that allah has taught some ghaib to his habib that mean that is also not ghaib no ghaib anymore it's not a ghaib anymore then why are you quoting the verses related to ghaib when it is no more ghaib so this is baseless anyhow so this hadith has been recorded by all these great scholars but if you refer to the english version of tafsir ibn kaseer from the abridged version سورة أحقاف وإذ صرفنا إليك نفرا من الجن under this verse سيدنا سعاد بن قارب رضي الله تعالى عنه his poetry is recorded in تفسير ابن كثير but they have taken it off from the English version why is that if this is proven they will be labeled as liars because they say نبي doesn't have the knowledge of the unseen here Sahaba agrees يا رسول الله You are been given such knowledge that you are aware of every ghaib. Wa anna kama moonun ala kulli ghaib. Now tell me, my dear brothers, Sahaba did believe that Allah's Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the knower of the ghaib. We also believe. Some don't believe. Who are on the path of Sahaba? Only those who believe in this. Allahu Akbar. How clear is the belief of Ahlu Sunnah wal Jamaah? Alhamdulillah. Fum alhamdulillah. And for these muhaddisin for this mutakallimin for these imams to narrate this hadith they narrated because sahaba narrated they recorded in their books because sahaba narrated and from sahaba tabi'in narrated from tabi'in taba tabi'in narrated so because sahaba tabi'in taba tabi'in narrated only these scholars have written in their books that mean beliefs of sahaba on the ghaib is proven beliefs of tabi'in is proven beliefs of taba tabi'in is proven beliefs of all the aima all the muhaddisin is proven so alhamdulillah the belief of ahlu sunnah is the proper belief the beliefs of sahaba ridwanullah alaihim ajma'in we must be grateful to allah for making us firm in this belief now as i mentioned the verse what they quote here qul la amliku li nafsi naf'an wa la dharra i don't claim that I got the treasure of Allah no I claim that I got the knowledge of the unseen Now alhamdulillah wa hazrat is here you all accept that he is a great alim right If he says I don't claim that I am an alim will you believe what he say What will you take his statement as he is telling because of his ages due to his humbleness He didn't say that I don't have knowledge he says I don't claim that I am an alim Does it mean he is not an alim? I don't claim I am not an alim. Doesn't mean I am not an alim. For example, a ruler says, a king says, I don't claim that I am a ruler. I am just a servant for the kaum. 
does it mean you don't believe him as a king doesn't make a sense right so a person due to his humbleness when he say that I don't claim that doesn't mean he is no more he is a ruler he is a king he is an alim but he is saying that I don't claim I got this at my own Allah has given me so when our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stated I don't claim I don't claim that I got the treasure of Allah that means Allah has given me but I don't say I don't claim that this is at my own no Allah has given me this I don't claim that I got the knowledge of unseen at my own Allah has given what is our belief who gave the knowledge of the unseen to Nabi Allah who made Allah's Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mukhtar and malik Allah for example Allah is the one to give ni'mah all agree right Allah is the one to bestow with blessings all agree Allah is the one to give the risk all agree Allah stated in the holy Quran walau annahum radu ma atahum Allah wa rasuluh how excellent it would be if they are happy with what Allah gave and his Rasul gave now who is giving in actually Allah but what did Allah say walau annahum radu ma atahum Allah wa rasuluh how excellent it would be that they be happy with what Allah gave them and Allah's Rasul gave them Allah is the giver but Allah says Allah's Rasul gave them so to be happy with what Allah's Rasul blessed us is the sign of the believers because Allah stated walau annahum radu how excellent it would be if they are pleased if they are happy with what Allah gave and his Rasul gave and some people their faces become dark while listening to this if we say Allah's Rasul blessed us like when someone asks how are you feeling Alhamdulillah by the blessings of Allah and his Rasul I am well some people say this is shirk right and those who say that I am well Alhamdulillah by the blessings of Allah and his Rasul tell me isn't it in accordance with the Quran walau annahum radu ma atahum Allah wa Rasul being happy with what Allah and his Rasul has blessed is the sign of believers and sign of munafiqin is to turn their faces this is also in the Quran وَمَا نَقَمُوا إِلَّا أَنَّغْنَاهُمُ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ What annoyed the munafiqeen? This is what Allah and His Rasul has enriched the believers. Allah and His Rasul has bestowed upon the believers. This annoyed the munafiqeen. So to turn the face is sign of munafiq for what Allah gave and His Rasul gave. And to be happy is the sign of a believer. For what Allah gave and His Rasul gave. Allah is the giver. But Rasul says, Allah says, My Rasul is giver. And Allah's Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stated, Wallahu ya'uti innama ana qasim. Allah is the giver. I am the distributor. All the ni'mah is given by Allah. And it is distributed through the holy coat of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah. So alhamdulillah by believing our Nabi possess the khazana, the treasures. This is from Quran. This is from Hadith. So due to humbleness, our Nabi stated, I don't claim that I got. Not at my own. Whatever I got is bestowed by Allah. Simple belief. People, by presenting this verse, they give a wrong explanation. They misinterpret the verse of the Quran. They give a wrong tafsir of the Quran in order to deny the ilm al-ghaib of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahu Akbar. My dear brothers, Allah's Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Malik, is Mukhtar, is the know of the unseen by the bestowal of Allah. If you read the book Al-Amn wal-Ula Lina'atil Mustafa Bidafi'i al-Bala which was actually in Urdu and Sayyiduna Mufti Akhtar Raza Khan Damat Barakatuhum Al-Aliyah has translated that book into Arabic and this book is in English as well Al-Amn wal-Ula where Allah Hazrat Imam Ahmad Raza has proved that our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is Mukhtar, is the authority holder and Dafi'ul Bala, remove of the calamities by quoting more than 40 verses and more than 200 hadiths. Allahu Akbar. We must read that book which is available online as well to understand what were the beliefs of Sahaba Karam Ridwanullahi Alayhi Majma'in. So presenting this verse to deny the ilm al of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this is wrong because this is out of context. They are giving a wrong explanation and further by pr presenting this verse they are denying the other verses of the Quran which proves the ghaib and other ahadith which proves the ghaib even of Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhim ajma'in. My dear brothers, 
Corrupt belief in the present syllabus of international schools. I selected this particular topic here because Alhamdulillah I am addressing in a gathering which is of intellectuals. Today, if you see the syllabus of international schools which is widely promoted in Sri Lanka, in UK and one of the author is Dr. Bilal Phillips who has written the syllabus for Islamic studies. Now first of all I must tell you if a person goes against the Quran whether it be me any scholar be Dr. Zakir Naik, be Dr. Bilal Phillips, be Mufti Mink, whoever any scholar if he goes against the Quran he is not a right scholar if he give a wrong belief, if he present a wrong belief though he claims to be Sunni scholar he can be a Mufti, he can be labeled as a Mufti, he can be labeled as Shaykh al-Hadith, Shaykh al-Quran but he is not a proper believer if he misquotes the Quran whoever, even myself any other Sunni scholar, Alhamdulillah by the blessings of Allah, no Sunni scholars misinterpret the Quran and Hadith. But just for the sake of understanding, anyone, if he goes against the Quran and Hadith, let him do any kind, any type of work. Wrong is wrong. Belief is first. Misquoting the Quran, misquoting the Hadith, this is not acceptable. So in the international schools, Islamic Education Series 1 to 10. This book is available online as well. And this has been taught in some international schools even in Sri Lanka. In this book, book 10, that is ordinary level, grade 10, you see the heading here, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam had no knowledge of the unseen. Now we have proven the knowledge of Sahaba from Quran and Hadith. From the tafsir of the Quran, from the hadith of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But the impression given in the international schools is that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, not about Sahaba, about Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had no knowledge of the unseen. We are sending our children to school. We look for Muslim schools, Islamic schools, so that our children become knowledgeable in the matters of Islam ultimately after 10 years after 12 years when they come out of school they have already corrupted their beliefs so my dear brothers always be careful don't send your children to such international schools where they teach such syllabuses now tell me honestly we proved even from Hafiz Ibn Kasir, the tafsir of Ibn Kasir, and the other books the knowledge of the unseen of Sahaba now they are denying the knowledge of Nabi isn't it against the Quran? So how can we believe in this? How can we allow our children to study under these schools? Under these scholars who teach this? Ultimately what happens? Your children will come and tell you. Call all the Muslims as mushrikeen, as grave worshippers. Respect is different, worship is different. Have you ever visited Sayyiduna Malik bin Dina radiallahu anhu who is thinking that they are, he is Allah? You go to him thinking that he is a wali of Allah, he is a sahabi or tabi, whatever it is, right? You don't take him as Allah. So you did not take them as Allah. That means you did not worship them. You respect. There is a huge difference between respect and worship. So they don't understand the difference between respect and worship. And they accuse as grave worshippers. If visiting a grave of a wali of Allah is worshipping, then why are you praying, why are you offering your prayer in front of Holy Kaaba? Why don't you say that you are stone worshipper? <laughs> Very simple. According to the hadith, more reward in prayer is for a person who prays near Maqam Ibrahim. Allah has stated in the Holy Quran as well about Maqam Ibrahim. وَاتَّخِذُوا مِن مَقَامِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ مُصَلَّى So a person, even those people who says this is shirk and bidah, he also when he goes to Makkah, he tries to offer near the holy Kaaba. Can anyone say he is worshipping the Kaaba? He will try to pray near Hajarul Aswad. Near Maqam Ibrahim, can anyone say he is worship of Hajarul Aswad? He is worship of Maqam Ibrahim? No. 
If you tell him, he says, what are you talking, man? I am offering my prayer to Allah. I just respect this place. Same answer. We worship only Allah. We respect the friends of Allah. Do we go to the grave of Abu Jahl? Have you ever gone to grave of Abu Jahl? Why not? Have you ever searched for the grave of Abu Lahab? Why not? If you are a grave worshipper, you should go to all the graves of the kuffar. You go only to the graves of Sahaba, of Awliya, of Anbiya. Why? Because they are selected by Allah. Allah. They are friends of Allah. And these people are enemies of Allah. So we don't worship them. We respect them because Allah has selected them. This difference has to be understood. By simply saying grave worshippers, this is totally incorrect and trying to misguide the general public. For further example, Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala's wali, nabi, or sahabi of a nabi, when we go to their grave, visiting the grave is a sign that they are resting in the grave. For example, Sayyidina Malik bin Dina radiallahu anhu is resting in the grave. For him to rest in the grave, he has to taste the death. Without tasting death, he is not going to be buried. For him to taste the death, he has to live in this dunya. And to live in this dunya, he has to be born. That means Sayyidina Malik bin Dina radiallahu anhu was born. He lived in this dunya. He did taste death. And he is resting in the grave. And grave of a believer is garden of Jannah as per the hadith. Raudatum mir riyadil jinnah. Garden of Jannah. Okay. Allah states in the Holy Quran, Lam yalid wa lam yulad. Allah is not born. No. Allah has given birth to anyone. No. Allah is, was born. He was not given birth. No. He has any children. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. And this Awliya Sayyidina Malik bin Dinar was born. Shirk means to associate partners with Allah in his zat and in his sifat. In the self, self of Allah and his attributes of Allah, in, the, in the attributes of Allah to associate someone. Now Allah is not born, they were born. Is there any similarity now? No. Allah stated in the Holy Quran, Allah has created everything on this earth for you, for people. Does Allah need to live in this world? In the sight of Allah, the whole earth is not, doesn't have a value even to a size of a fly. Allah wa ta is be niyaz, independent. Allah is samad. He doesn't need to live in this dunya. He has created dunya for us. So Sayyidina Malik bin Dina radiallahu anhu lived in this dunya. No similarity. Allah stated in the Ayatul Kursi La ta'khuduhu sinatun wa la naum Death is far away Allah doesn't sleep nor has drowsiness Sleep nor drowsiness He doesn't even feel drowsy And Sayyidina Malik bin Dinar did taste death No similarity Allah doesn't have a grave He is resting in a grave No similarity Allah has created Jannah for the believers. So a grave of a believer is garden of Jannah for Allah. Does he need to stay in Jannah? Allah has created it. So when there is no similarity, how can you say this is shirk to visit the grave of Awli? So calling it as grave worshippers is actually these people are showing their beliefs that they believe Allah was born. They believe Allah lived in this world. They believe Allah did taste death. They believe Allah is in the grave for them to call is as shirk. Allahu Akbar and some people say proclaiming Ya Rasulullah is also shirk now if I ask you what does Ya Rasulullah mean O Rasul of Allah. when I say Ya Habib Allah O Habib of Allah. Ya Nabi Allah O Prophet of Allah. did you call our Nabi as Allah or Nabi of Allah yes. by calling Ya Rasulullah did you claim he is Allah or Rasul of Allah you did not call him as Allah you called him as only Rasul of Allah and Habib of Allah and these people say this is shirk to call Ya Rasul Allah that means they take Nabi as Allah or they have not understood the meaning of the shirk my dear brothers the day any deviant scholar let it be from Salafism from Wahhabism from Deobandism any scholar 
the day they give the real meaning, real definition of shirk and bid'ah, they will come to the fold of Ahl Sunnah. Because the day they give the real meaning of shirk, they will have to believe that Allah has given the powers to Awliya and Anbiya. Because Allah's powers are self and these are bestowal. So they will have to believe that knowledge of the unseen was given to the prophets and awliya. Because Allah's knowledge is self and these are bestowal. So they won't ever give the real meaning of the shirk nor the real meaning of bid'ah. And you are free to ask them for the real definition of shirk and bid'ah. The day they give you will prove them as wrong and they will have to accept that what you said is right and if they don't accept that means knowingly they are going on the wrong path so in the school textbooks they give this information you send your children to these schools after completing their studies they have lost their iman by rejecting the verses of the quran if they reject obviously out of the fold of islam so by rejecting the verses of the quran they have gone out of the fold of Islam whereas you send them to the schools in order for them to study Islam but ultimately they have not studied Islam they have become apostate by purposely rejecting the verses of the Holy Quran now beliefs of Sahaba on the hearing and the speech of the dead now this is a big task dead can hear or not if you ask a scholar, can the dead hear, what is his first answer? If you ask a Wahhabi scholar or a Salafi scholar, the first answer is, dead cannot hear, right? And they quote a verse of the Quran, Inna kala tusmi'ul mawta. O Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you cannot make the dead hear. They also quote a verse, Wama anta bi musmi'im man fil qubur. Those who are in the grave, they cannot hear okay now you must ask them can you read the verse in full وَمَا أَنْتَ بِمُسْمِعِمْ مَنْ فِي الْقُبُورِ is there any hafiz here what is the sentence before this إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُسْمِعُ مَنْ يَشَاءِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُسْمِعُ مَنْ يَشَاءِ after that وَمَا أَنْتَ بِمُسْمِعِمْ مَنْ فِي الْقُبُورِ what does it mean you cannot make the dead here at your own if Allah wills Allah make the dead here what is our belief are we able to make the dead here at our own no who gave the listening power Allah so we believe Allah has given the power of listening to the dead not me and you so verse is also clear inna Allah indeed Allah yusmi'u may yasha he makes them hear whomever Allah wills you cannot make the dead here first of all this verse doesn't relate to the person who is in the grave no this is related to the kuffar who did not accepted who did not accept iman even after looking at the blessed face of muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alaihi they are referred as dead and hafiz ibn kasir has stated that this verse is related to the kuffar who did not bring iman this is about the kuffar but these people are saying this is for the graves in reality the dead even if it is for the real dead our belief is right Allah is the one to give the listening power and Allah has mentioned in the Quran Inna Allaha yusmi'u man yasha wa ma anta bi musmi'im man fil qubur if Allah wills Allah make them here you cannot make them very simple our belief is also the same so in surah room they present this verse under this verse Hafiz ibn Kasir has recorded Hadith مَا مِنْ أَحَدٍ يَمُرُّ بِقَبْرِ أَخِيهِ الْمُسْلِمِ كَانَ يَعْرِفُهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا فَيُسَّلِّمُ عَلَيْهِ إِلَّا رَدَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ رُوحَهُ حَتَّى يَرُدَّ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ أو كما قال مفهوم When a person visits a grave of a person a Muslim whom he recognized in this dunya now the person inside the grave he recognizes who has come to my grave and he listens to your salam and he responds to your salam as well for him to recognize who has come for example my grandfather had passed when I go to the graveyard according to the hadith my grandfather recognizes me when I say salam assalamu alaikum ya jaddi oh my grandfather salam upon you 
he listens to the salam because Allah has given the listening power hatta yaruddu alayhi salam they even respond to the salam so to listen to the salam listening power is proven or not and to respond to the salam talking power is proven or not speech is also proven